My name is Jim. I'm 26 years old. Two weeks ago, I was involved in a motor vehicle accident as an unrestrained passenger. I was taken to the hospital by ambulance. I spent one week in the ICU and one week in acute care before being transferred to an inpatient rehab setting. I present to inpatient rehab with complete loss of movement and sensation in my legs. Despite the severity of the trauma, I did not experience a loss of consciousness in the accident. Hello, Jim. Today I'm going to do a test that's going to help us classify your injury and tell us a little bit about the severity of your injury. The first part of the test is the sensation part, and the second part is testing your ability to move your arms and legs. So for the first part, which is the sensation part, I'm going to touch different areas of your skin with this cotton swab, and I want you to tell me normal if it feels normal to you, and not normal if you feel it and it doesn't feel normal to you. This is what it should feel like. Do you feel that? Yes. Okay. Okay, Jim, what I want you to do is close your eyes, and I want you to tell me if it feels normal. I want you to tell me if it feels not normal. Okay? Okay. Normal. 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 Not normal. 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 Not normal. Not normal. Good job. That was it for the first part of the test. The next part of the test will assess your ability to distinguish sharp versus dull sensations. This is what the sharp will feel like. And this is what the dull will feel like. Okay? Okay. Okay, for this part, I want you to tell me if it's sharp or dull. So I want you to close your eyes. Sharp. Sure. Dull. Dull. Dull, sharp, dull, dull, dull. Great job, we're almost done. We just finished the sensation part, so now we're going to work on the muscle part. Um, in this last part of the test, I'm going to assess the strength in your arms and legs. 
you can keep your eyes open for this one. All right, Jim, now I want, to, want you to move your arm in this direction. All the way up. Good job. All right, Jim, now what I want you to do is bring your arm up like this. Alright Jim, what I want you to do next is lift your wrist up like this. Can you hold it here? Okay, you try it. Good, let's see the other side. I want you to lift it up like this. Can you hold it up like this? Okay, you try and lift it. Good. Okay, Jim, next I want you to lift your hand up like this. Excellent. Good job. Now, can you lift that wrist up like this? Very good. Good job. Okay, Jim, for this next part, we're going to lift your arm up here like this. And I want to see if you can straighten your arm just like this. Okay, you try. I feel a little bit in there. Let's try the other arm. I feel a little bit kicking in there. Good. Okay, Jim, for this next part, I want to see if you can straighten your arm out like this. I feel it kicking in. Is that it right there? No. Okay, good job. Okay, Jim, what I want to see you do is straighten your arm out like this. Getting it a little bit. I feel that muscle kicking. Is that it right there? Yeah. All right, good job. An important aspect of the Asia assessment is assessing the motor and sensory integrity of spinal roots S4 and S5. For obvious reasons, this portion of the test was not filmed. However, it should be noted that Jim had neither sensation nor motor control at the S4, S5 level. Based on the ASIA exam you just watched, complete the ASIA form and determine the motor level, the sensory level, and the neurological level. Based on your findings, where does the patient fall on the ASIA impairment scale? Use the patient's neurological level to create appropriate short and long-term functional goals.